Did you know there's a quick and easy way to modify the lighting in your scenes after you render your image? Yes, you heard that right. We're going to show you exactly how that is done using V-Ray. And this example project is Cloud of Luster Chapel, designed by Tetsuya Matsumoto. Let's start. The first thing that we need to do is set up the V-Ray lights. So I'm going to set up the dome light first. I'm simply going to click here and position it. Once we have the dome light, I'm going to pick up the HDRI image that I want to use. So let's go to the properties here, click on the dome light go to the texture and here I'm gonna choose my HDRI file. Once I have the file loaded in, let's see what else we can do. So I'm going to go to layers here and I divided my uh, lights here. So we have interior center light, garden lights, accent lights, underwater and column lights. So we're going to start with the first one's interior center light. I'm going to right click here and select the object. Let me just, before that, let me just hide this temporarily. And I'm going to select it now. This is the surface that we're going to be using for the light. So all I need to do here is just select it and then click here, convert it to mesh light. If I open my V-Ray, you will see that I'm going to have a new mesh light. Let's rename it and let's call it the same way. Interior center light. Okay, let's move on. The next thing that we need to do is we need to create the garden lights. The garden lights are going to be all of these lights uh, that are on the outside. So I'm going to select them and I'm going to temporarily isolate them so I can see what I'm doing. And I know that I created these uh, as blocks. So all of them are the same block. So all I need to do is actually go to one, double click. I'm going to go to wireframe mode and I'm going to select this bulb there. And this is the guy that I want to illuminate. So I'm going to click here, convert to mesh light. And now this will put a new mesh light that you can see here. And I'm simply going to call it garden lights. Once I finish that, I'm going to click OK. And now all of these guys are going to be the same garden lights. Then let's uncover everything again. Let's now select the accent lights. And I'm going to repeat the same procedure. These are also separate blocks. So double click, select it, and then convert it to mesh light. This is going to be accent lights. And I'm going to repeat the process for uh, the last part, which is underwater lights. Let's select those, right click, select, isolate, double click, select this guy here. And then I'm going to go and pick uh, convert to mesh light. Again, I want to make sure that I have the same naming here. So I will name it under water lights. Okay. And I think we have the last one. The last one is column lights. So let's uncover everything again. Let's select the column lights. Let's isolate them. And then let's open one of those blocks. Select this guy, convert it to the light mesh. And then just rename it here as well, column lights okay so now this is the first step once we have those done i'm going to now uncover everything and we're going to test this scene i'm going to simply open up my uh, v-ray here and i will just use the default settings let me just uh, lower this a bit down so we can see it better and if i click render you would see that i'm gonna get a very bright illuminated image that's because we have the HDRI image outside. Okay, so let's imagine that you want to create a delighting effect like this. Usually this would take you a lot of back and forth, a lot of adjusting a lot of lights. And here I just created uh, this camera angle so you can take a look. And if you just click on render, you'll be able to see similar angle, but the lighting will be much, much different, right? Then we would you know, manually need to lower down the light of the HDRI. We would need to increase the other lights. So that would mean I would go here, then I would go to the dome light, I would go something like 0 0.1, then I would change uh, the interior lights to, let's say something else. This one, I would change the color to maybe yellow, then I would change, let's say, to 300, then I would do the render again, and I would see if I, if I would get, you know, uh, a, a similar result. This can work, but it can take a lot, a lot of, you know, back and forth modifications and changes. There is a much smarter way and this is what we're going to be doing now. The trick is to use a so-called light mix. You can find it here when you go to the plus sign and click on render elements under light mix. When you click there, uh, in this case, you want to select group by group instances because that way our blocks will work together as one. Once you do this, 
then everything is ready. Now you can simply set up your rendering settings, production settings in this case, and then hit render. If you're interested in checking out how I modeled this project from the beginning, you can check a complete two hour video on our Patreon page. You'll be able to see all the modeling details and commands I used. And on top of that, you will get access to all of our other extended tutorials and project files so you can follow along. The link is in the description. Now let's see how this image would render out. I'm probably gonna pick camera one and I'm going to uh, leave everything as default. Let me just show you the light uh, settings. So we have everything 100 except the dome light, which is 0.3. Once we adjust all of the settings for rendering, we can hit render. And this is the result that we got. We have some sort of sunset with some lights here in the scene. And now the question is, how do we turn on light mix and how do we play with this? It's really important to note that you should not exit this frame buffer before you do light mixing. In order to do light mixing, you need to expand this uh, side view here. You just move it this way. And here you will have all of the lights that we had from before. If you remember, we have all of these lights here as well. And also some additional lights like self-illumination, environment and rest. It's really important to note that light mix will work in most cases, but you cannot use it if you want really extreme results. For example, if you really want to change from a complete night to a complete day, then that will not work. But if you have some sort of like a middle ground like we have here, it would work well. So what we can do, we can actually play with lights. For example, I'm going to change the, the column lights. Let's go for something like three. You can see that I'm starting to see change here. Let's go for five, okay. Now let's change the dome light from one to let's say 10. And you can see we already have much, much a better result. But I, I don't like the sky that much, so I will keep this a little bit lower. So let's see something like seven. Yeah, this would work. I don't like this middle part. I think it's too bright. So we can uh, use this and we can lower it from, zero po from one to 0 0.5, for example and you can see the change of the effect there. You can even change this to some some kind of yellowish color and you'll be able to see uh, what the result would uh, that give you in the, in the scene, which is quite cool because you can create new ambience there. Underwater lights, I think we're gonna keep them maybe slightly 3.5, something like this. And you can see the result here as well. Let's modify, make it a little bit yellowish to give it a little more life. Okay, so this is the image. And now you can see how quickly we, we changed all of this. If you want to check the image before, you simply click on RGB. This is before and this is after light mix. In addition to light mix, you can also play with the correction layers here. So what we can do here, we can click on a display correction and you can change here the exposure. In the right click, new layer, and I can choose, for example, curves. And now I'm going to get the curves layer here, which I will be able to modify slightly. I can, for example, create a DS curve. I can take this guy. Let's take it by the handle like this and also the one on the bottom. And you can see how I'm modifying my image. If you want to see how it is before, you simply click there and there. Okay. One thing you don't have is, is the opacity, but you have the intensity here. So you can change this from one to let's say 0.3 which is kind of similar to opacity. If you want to go further, you can of course experiment with color balance, with white balance, with exposure. Let's for example, see color balance. And here you can a slight, let's bring this a little bit more to like a green color. I'll bring a little bit more to yellow, a little bit more to red, and you can see how we're getting, we're getting nice colors. So this is what I wanted to share with you in this tutorial to show you how uh, you can uh, very quickly change your images from looking like this to looking like this. If you'd like to know exactly how to create complex projects like these, and if you're interested in step-by-step -step learning approach starting from zero, make sure to check our Grasshopper Complete course, where you'll find over 60 hours of video material structured in a form of video library, covering in depth more than 500 Grasshopper components through practical examples. And you'll have access to us personally, so we can answer all of your questions right away. The link is in the description.